Yeah, readings and salutations, all you beautiful people. Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. As always, a little bit of Wednesday LCS action to get through, and the schedulers continue to nail it because we get in the middle of the day. Keep everybody interested. Cloud9 versus Golden Guardians, which, as Sven tweeted beforehand, it can't be a rivalry when Cloud9 just beats them every time. No, it cannot. But we got something different this time on the table. We're serving up a Golden Guardians dub, courtesy of Mr. J4 River in the jungle on that Jarvan. Have you ever seen a Jarvan utilize those cataclysms so aggressively and then capitalize it on him on himself with those opportunities? I mean, Magic just followed him wherever he went. This is start to finish domination. He goes mid lane, he goes top lane, grabs a couple of kills as soon as the team fights roll around. Multiple times you saw him locking in three, four members of Cloud9 in that Cataclysm. Yeah, it was an absolute masterclass from him. Later on, you finally get Stix A uh, on Aphelios three items, and we know that that is done, signed, delivered, game over for him. How often do you see... First off, Berserker of all people, cash in 1400 on a single kill on Draven, and it doesn't impact the game whatsoever. It didn't matter at that point because River had done his job. The rest of the Golden Guardians pick up the pieces. They keep building themselves up. The power is established, and it is the Golden Guardians that use that to press forward, press at these objectives, and to press in to that Cloud9 base and take down that Nexus. Golden Guardians, we challenged them. We looked at this type of schedule, this type of matchup, and we said what we needed was them to prove that, okay, you're in this territory with Cloud9 up towards the top of the LCS. Now prove that you are the one that can usurp them, can take them out of that number one spot. This game, this format, this performance is how you do that Golden Guardian. Still, you know, it's good for the LCS as a whole to have... Golden Guardians showing up and playing at a level like this against C9. I'm still waiting for Fudge to have a big impact in pretty much any of these games in summer. We saw maybe, you know, kind of a couple of flashes, a couple of sparks of Fudge having some dominance in that top side. Beginning of the year, it was mostly about the Cassante being that champion and where Cassante was and the newness around him and everything else. And now we've stepped into this summer split. And again, this is that stretch where we really want to see it dialed up to 11 to 12 for Cloud9 to show us that they are continuing on that scale of leveling up, being better, that they're going to improve on whatever we saw at MSI. One of the tickets for that is Fudge being a dominant factor in the top side. Wasn't so in this matchup. And that wasn't the only issue, obviously. It was more it was more praise than Golden Guardians than disappointment for Cloud9 in this one to kind of renew that rivalry. We were full steam ahead. Three in a row for FlyQuest. Here they come. They're coming for that top of the table for the Golden Guardians and Cloud9. But you'll never see a bigger draft difference than running into the wall and rock that is Malphite Poppy with a full AD comp for FlyQuest. There has to be somebody spider senses going off, some alarm happening in the draft where you're going, guys, we are going down a path that has only one avenue, and this squad has got the avenue that says roadblock. This is not happening. You're not getting through. That is what that poppy, that is what that malphite is, staring into that AD composition. And look, there's lots of ways to debate it, but I've, I've got some sympathy for you, man, Prince, in this one getting caught out too many times with that Malphite ult. With flash up, and they weren't even flash ulties out of some day, some of the more predictable Malphite ulties. He's probably just hoping to blow his flash and ends up killing him. It's, oh, okay. Well, that was pretty yeah, easy. But uh, That's not what you need. How about the difference? Second week of action, we've seen Quid. The, the growth and improvement. As we said, you got to be patient with this guy he's a rookie coming over to an entirely new country but already week to week the improvements have been incredible he was making look making Vicla look a little silly at times in this one which i mean that's kind of on two separate ends number one the positive for quid and the way that he has continued to adjust continue his development and look more comfortable and more like the player the prospect that you were bringing over and signing up for 
as 100 Thieves and a player that even in this prospect mode shows signs like this, shows comfort with the team like this, you can start to look at that LCS path towards the playoffs, towards doing some damage in that playoff scenario. But on the other side, you're looking at FlyQuest, you're looking at this step, you know, this misstep again from some from someone like Vikla in that mid lane for this squad, getting passed over by someone like Quid. This shouldn't be happening from what we have seen in the development of Vikla's career, where we know he can be, what he can deliver, and already has been able to deliver in his career. This is not the good look for him. Uh, second thing I got a question. Can he only play Tristana at this point? FlyQuest? Why, uh, I, can look, he I play know Tristana? <laughs> Sheesh, at this point, yeah, that has to be the question. Not good for FlyQuest. A good bounce, a little bit of sunshine still for these 100 Thieves. Uh, another setback for the FlyQuest fan. Yeah, three and seven as that hype train is quickly derailed for them and 100 Thieves moved to five and five. Still, you know, I think a lot of it is meta dependent, the level that we're seeing closer right now. Anytime, I mean, I know you can still play the Viego, but it's mostly Maokai, Poppy now, Sejuani sneaking in, the Vi. It's, it's not the carry junglers that we're associating closer with, which... Is why I'm saying we haven't seen this dominant MVP level out of him, even going back to spring, really. I mean, if I'm closer, I'm looking over at River and what he just did on that Jarvan, because we have seen closer have some pretty good Jarvan performances before, play a little bit more aggressively. That could be something that could slot in. I'd be looking over to the LEC to a rookie called Mr. Yike and what he has been able to do and how creative he has been for G2. Those are, I think, inspirations. Someone like Closer can take and take that type of performance to the Rift for these 100 Thieves and hit that next level. Right now, not quite ready to, to put expectations, put hype on them towards these playoffs, but that can change if they continue to deliver performances and dubs like this one. 100 Thieves, Belveth, and Kha'Zix coming to you soon to cosplay and channel that inner yike for Closer and the boys. Also had EG and Dig on the rift and listen dignitas has been a surprise squad here and this was low-key the banger of the day more so than that cloud nine golden guardians match because it was kind of one-sided this one was very back and forth had some explosive team fights we had a zig sighting in the bottom lane but how about eg unforgiven racking up 14 kills this guy was in the academy scene last year unbelievable unforgiven is someone that i think throughout the course of his career kind of uh, got lost in the shuffle lost in the way of some of these new players the new talent all this fresh you know erl uh, players coming through in the lec that he got kind of you know oh done okay that's okay well that's what you got out the door you go type of situation to see him get this opportunity and bouncing back and then getting this promotion to the lcs very deservedly so and popping off in that continued fashion. This is good for him. Very happy to see that dominance, that Zaya kill threat coming through for these evil geniuses. This is the evil geniuses squad. As you said, this is a good matchup against Dignitas. This is an EG that keeps needing to build themselves up. After that poor performance in that head-to-head -head against Cloud9, these type of wins are a great way to do so. And, you know, if you look at JoJo's performance so far in summer, I've been looking at his numbers. He's number one or two in pretty much all the major statistical categories among mid laners. My guy is right there as a front runner MVP candidate, as he said he wanted to be coming into this split. And on the on the dig side of things, you feel bad because both Santorin and Vikla take notes. Jensen on the Tristana in this game, both veterans on dig played a fantastic game, even though they lost. Yeah, and I think that this is one of those ones where, you know, I call it a loser mentality. There certainly still are positives to take away if you are Dignitas and how, I guess, how bad things have been at various points to see that you can take some positives, some lessons from this one, some good signs still and feel comfortable about where you are in the LCS and that you're not out of it type of picture. That's the best for Dignitas. On that JoJo Pion angle, my man, we were trying to deny it. I desperately wanted it not to be the case for so long was that sophomore slump you slap on an armeo you slap in an unforgiven into evil geniuses goodbye sophomore slump jojo pyun back to that type of level and i mean even by his own admission the level of, of focus and practice that he is putting in for this split is of another level back more so to professional degree good to see
after the game, by the way, Revenge was saying he wants to be recognized more among some of these other top laners. I think you need better rumble ults for us to fully be talking about him in that category. Yeah, I'm, I'm clean those ones up. A couple of better positionings, the angles of them, that can be the real quick trip for that one is to Revenge. NRG have had some of the most bonkers wins and losses so far this split. Add another one to it against Team Liquid because they had no business winning this game. And I have never in the history of the pro scene seen a guy have such an underwhelming performance. And so quickly, we're talking 12 hours later, we're hearing that Harry's getting benched from TL. Uh, there's your confirmation that Eric is like one of the nicest guys in the universe because the way that he described that performance from Harry is that anything. <laughs> that, was, God, that was the most uh, bubble cushion around it type of way to say it because yikes, my man, you had the rest of Team Liquid getting everything done. Every other possible area of the map is a win, is a dub, is a crushing victory for this Team Liquid team. You just needed that Akali to stay alive for, you know, two seconds to just more. Maybe be not there in a team fight. Oh my goodness. It was brutal, infuriating to watch. And yes, this is a young player that is making these type of mistakes. But at this point, those type of mistakes, even if you are inexperienced, even if you're young, even if you got that potential, there has to be some reevaluation, especially when you are seeing that performance, that metric from the other players on this Team Liquid team. That's where you have someone like Appa stepping in and what we have seen from him in the Academy situation. I feel like this is a deserved moment to take this opportunity to step in as him and for Harry to take that step back and reevaluate, refocus his own game. And you know what? Credit to him. He immediately said afterwards, you know, my performance has been bad. Root for this guy. I'm going to work and be even better. So fantastic mentality for him to have. Um, Appa, as you mentioned, I think consensus, a lot of people saying, He's near the top uh, of these Academy mid laners, and Team Liquid is sitting first in the Academy Summer Split right now. So at least they have that opportunity, but I'm not sure how good his Korean is, Mark. Can he, can he slot into this uh, communication wise? It's going to be it, of course. You got to be speaking Korean if you're working in the Team Liquid organization in this system that they've got going on through Summit, Piosik, or JJ, of course. These are the big ones if you're in Team Liquid. I've got faith. If this is going to work out. I think there is going to be, of course, there's always is, no matter what the player, what the situation, there's some adjustment period, and you got to look at that in the game performance. I've got faith that Team Liquid is still going to be shining on through. And, you know, they kind of had to be quick to make a move like this because spring, they didn't make playoffs. This is summer. This is world's qualification on the line. You need to have a good run here, and we've seen these games where Team Liquid looks so good against Cloud9, against the best teams in the LCS, and then they're throwing 10k gold leads, they're losing games to NRG that they have no business losing. I'm hoping that Appa coming in kind of cleans up all these mid to late game issues that TL has had. When you've seen Team Liquid and you've seen them have those type of issues and you see that come at a cost on your record, where your position is in this LCS standing, that is the really important thing to me when you're looking at this type of move, this type of change for Team Liquid, because you're not in a position where you can have those mistakes, that inconsistency coming through like we were getting with Harry. So we have to make this change. Stepping in with Appa, this course, not a lot of runway room left to Get yourself off on the ground and start taking off with the rest of this crew. I've got that faith, though. They're going to do it. I mean, the rest of the core looks pretty good. Piosic had another good game. Summit popping off on Fiora. Again, it, honestly impressive that Team Liquid somehow managed to lose this game. So uh, bad news all around for them. In that match, one week. That's all it takes. TSM also pulling the trigger quickly. They see the performance with Ruby in the lineup. They say this was our marquee free agent signing. We give them a week and quickly realize, man, everyone was right. Insanity looks a whole lot better. He gets dropped right in, plays the Yone. I know it's only against Immortals, but gotta feel like TSM probably has a couple more wins to their name if Insanity was just playing last week too. I promise you at least one, at least one. And if you're in the position that TSM is most likely gonna be in and kind of that floundering middle pack or on the outside looking in lcs playoffs getting an extra dub can be all that important and very valuable for the team what's valuable to me 
is insanity. Back in that mid lane, some NA talent and deserved talent stepping in and delivering that aggression, delivering that gameplay that we talked about. That ain't no Ruby Yone out there, man. That's my insanity Yone out there, dominating, crushing, killing folks, and taking that gold, taking your Nexus down as well. Good for TSM to realize and recognize this type of thing. I mean, uh, you got to give them, I guess, one pat on the back, even if it is literally everybody in the world possibly yelling this at them. Even if you aren't uh, this, you know, big supporter of NA talent, you had to realize that your best opportunity for winning was with Insanity in the lineup. And that's where we are for TSM. What's been most impressive to me about him is the guy comes in who is expected to just be a sub for the first week or two until Ruby's Visa gets sorted out. And he's coming from Academy so many times we see those guys be a little timid, worried about losing their starting spot, the pressure. He came in guns blazing. He was confident. And even after he gets subbed out for Ruby, he immediately gets dropped in with Yone. And just watch him play this whole game. He's not afraid to make these engages or go for plays that are risky. And TSM reaps the rewards. He looks great. I'm calling it the M&M, &M, the eight mile. You got one shot. That is the type of determination that I see in Insanity right now on TSM. He's got that one shot. This is that one moment that he's got as an LCS starting mid laner. He ain't about to let this blow. He's going to make it count and make these big plays and pick up the dub. And remember earlier in the split, Immortals started two and one. We were saying, wow, look at them go. Now they're sitting at two and eight and... They look, they look pretty poised for that 10th place spot, unless FlyQuest really continues to not figure things out. Oh, please. I don't know what's worse, because I do have these hopes. I had, you know, uh, desires for this Immortals team to be better for certain things that they made the changes to work out and play out a little bit better. I haven't quite seen that to the full extent. There have been some sloppiness and mistakes, all these type of things. Of course, the LCS bottom level teams, all these things. Man, I can't tell you what's going to be more disappointing. If it is Immortals floundering that good start in this summer split, or if, if they, uh, that FlyQuest squad, excuse me, keeps the crashing down to this bottom level. I'll tell you right now, it's 100% FlyQuest because nobody in their right mind was expecting Immortals to be capturing the summer title. I think yeah. if you did odds on favorites, a lot of people would have put FlyQuest even ahead of the two MSI squads in Cloud9 and Golden Guardian. So yes, this, I know it's just the one loss to 100 Thieves. They still got two games this week, but the draft real bad for that one against 100T. Couple of LCK matches with how dominant JDG and BLG have been. We're almost not impressed as Gen G continues to roll to another undefeated split. They move to 9-0. and And I feel like it's a combination I think most people, especially with, you know, T1 having their issues and things that they're dealing with, it feels like the LCK is not at as high a level when you look top to bottom as we saw out of spring. Maybe that's why people seem almost less impressed by this 9-0 start, but Pay's almost got a Penta in back-to-back -back games. Look, I mean, there's room to have that discussion about the LCK, about Gen G, sure, and maybe not being a super impressed or needing to have that extra level of excitement that you are going to buy in to the LCK, to a Gen G squad. I'm telling you what, if you ain't buying in on Pays, if you ain't buying in on a Kai'Sa that is dominating that type of way, I don't know who you are and what you're looking to buy because that is the premium product out there on the Rift right now. Yes, Gen G picking up another win. Pays dominating all the way through. Peanut sick, it doesn't matter. This is the Gen G squad rolling on through. Peanut seemed like he was laughing even more than usual playing from home when everyone else is on stage. He looked like he was having a great time on the rift. I'll tell you who else was having a great time. Mr. Doran, a Quinn gangplank back-to-back -back game. And not only that, Peanut actually camping top lane? What multiverse event happened that we swapped Dorans with some other universe where this is Giga Doran stepping on through playing the champions playing that Quinn. This is fun. This is great to see this type of uh, evolution, this type of um, development and growth for someone like Doran. We've talked about a lot of times, and especially as Gen G, this extra angle where you do have a top laner that is, maybe, maybe it's not just about playing weeks and maybe it's not just about being a neutralizer, a negator. Maybe we are getting 
advantages in that top side. The way that someone like Doran is playing right now, that's the path to victory if you are Gen G. Well, all of a sudden, you've got three lanes that can carry you, you know, against pretty much anyone in the LCK. We're hoping that KT can be the squad now to kind of test Gen G because I'll tell you what, if you're at a worse level as a region than you were in spring, and what happened against the LPL? You better be scared about worlds, my man. You are very scared about worlds in that type of situation. Never mind Asian games before that. It is worlds that you are panicked about at that type of situation. I think that I've seen enough kind of glimpses around a squad like Gen G, as well as KT, kind of in the in the waiting in the wings. And you know we don't know what we're gonna get with a D plus Kia T one situation. I feel slightly better about the LCK than I did even knowing about the MSI result heading towards this world's. At the same time, I've seen quite a lot of scary things from the LPL that is telling me it's going to be even more so of a challenge than it was at MSI. Pays is always a treat to watch on Gen G, but the OG 1v9 ADC from the LCK, Mr. Viper, as we enter this post clid era, Grizzly continues to develop. I know it's against Nongshim, but a 2 0 sweep. Nongshim as a team. 13 kills. Viper as a single lone AD carry, 24 kills. He almost doubled up the total kills that Nongshim got in the whole series. Uh, and, and look, I, there's no overreactions on this one. It's a positive movement for Hanwha Life, a positive, a really positive sign of seeing Viper pop off to this type of degree, carry at this level. It still is just a, a win against a squad like Nanshim for these Hanwha Life squad, which needs a lot more than just this positive to build back up into a territory that's going to matter in the LCK, matter in the international community. But hey, you got to start somewhere. Each journey starts with that single step. Can this journey start with a single victory over Nanshim? And listen, we've been saying this ever since this new look Hanwha roster came in in 2023. It's got to be more than Viper. You can't just, as soon as you're trying to enter into that top four status, which is where they're, you know, right there with D plus as kind of that fourth team in the LCK, you need Zeka, you need King in, but it's, I mean, this meta, maybe you don't because the Felios and Kaisa are absolutely out of control and it's hard to pick who the best Kaisas are in the LCK or LPL because every star AD carry seems to excel on this pick. I mean, I, I'm, I'm rolling with Pays. Right yep. <laughs> That's pretty good solid, you? I'm rolling with that one. But as you mentioned, with, with Viper playing like this, and yes, as we knew uh, with this team, is that it can't just be Viper. Well, today it was, and yes, that was enough, but I still am in that argument that someone else needs to step up. And what I'm using is this performance, this type of carry, this type of exceptional uh, effort from Viper in this matchup to get over that finish line. I'm hoping players like Zeka and Kingan are looking at that type of performance and getting inspired and going, okay, this guy's stepping up again. He's popping off at this type of level. I got to bring what, what I've got to the table at a higher degree. That is how you start to unlock more of that world champion power that some of these Hanwha Life players have got. Three-fifths of them, guys. We got world titles under the belt. Let's start playing like it and start contending in that top four territory. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thank you for watching. We will catch you on that flippity flip.